Good morning, YouTube. This is Cactus Naga, and I'm here with my 2003 Nissan Altima. A couple of weeks ago, on Christmas Day actually, I was at uh, Safeway in the parking lot, and this car refused to crank, it refused to start. I thought it was the battery and was uh, looking around under the hood when this fella pulls up alongside and offers a jump. So we connected up the batteries and, and still there was no crank, which uh, then changed the focus to the starter. This good fella goes back to his truck and brings out a hammer and starts tapping on the starter with it. And guess what? The car started. So this uh, neat little trick, this starter tapping thing, it can get you out of being stranded and having to call a tow truck. Keep in mind, however, that the starter is going bad and it must be replaced as soon as possible. The solenoid is getting stuck and it may not unstick with a hammer next time. In my case, I've had to use a hammer a couple of times while I waited for the new starter to arrive. And it is here now and the time has come to replace it. So this is a shout out to the good fella who showed me this trick on Christmas Day. Good fella, you know who you are. If you happen to see this video, please comment below. So let me show you where the, the starter is located. So it's this thing here. This, this is the starter and it's, um, it's just sitting on, on top of the transmission. And uh, in order to get to it, I think I'll have to remove this uh, intake, air intake. And I think I will also remove the battery just to get a little more access to it. So to remove the, the intake, there is this clamp here that needs to be loosened. There is another clamp here that needs to be loosened. I will probably have to disconnect this hose and uh, this whole uh, uh, pipe should come off. To get the battery off, um, remove the, the, the clamp and uh, loosen the terminals and the battery should slide off. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. So there it is, I've removed the, uh, the hose, the air intake. Um, I thought it was going to be better to remove the, the clamp here but as it turns out it's kind of difficult to get it off from this end so I loosened the other end that is connected inside into the engine and uh, loosened that clamp and it pulled out fairly easily. The battery also has been removed. Um, I think this is a good time to to kind of remove the, the corrosion on the on the connector there. So I'm going to put this aside and kind of take a look at the starter that's down there. The battery's been disconnected so it's safe. Um, without disconnecting the battery, please do not go down and touch the connections on the starter. That thing is always live and it is always connected to the battery. So this, uh, this connector has a little lock on the underside and there's a tab there that you need to depress. And you can kind of wiggle it out and there it is. Um, this is the little tab that needs to be depressed and uh, there's a lock there that will latch on so just get that out of the way um, here is the the terminal the battery terminal that is always live it has a rubber boot on it just to prevent things from accidentally shorting things out i've got to remove this nut and get the cable out of there there is a, a bolt a couple of bolts and you can see one of them right down here maybe from here you can see that better perhaps uh, no so 
down in there and you can see that now there is a the bolt there that needs to be removed um, this wire harness is kind of in the way so we'll probably be better off if uh, we get that out of the way so there is a, a little clip down here that can be removed by just by pressing down on the two sides if you press down on the two sides there and you can get that out of the way so we'll do that so let's start by getting the um, the the main cable out of uh, the disconnected I've got the harness out of the way now uh, there was actually not just one clip that I had to um, undo but there was another one on over here too uh, right here and that had to be undone too so that uh, the, the cable could move out of the way but uh, now that I've done that uh, it is it seems like uh, there is this bracket here that will also need to be removed there's a couple of a couple of bolts down there one here there's one down here there's a bolt here and there's another bolt there that 10 millimeter bolts that will need to be removed get this bracket out of the way uh, it's connected to the to the body of the starter anyway so it has to come off so let me get the that bracket off the bracket that was holding the harness and the and the cable together bolted to the body of the starter is now been removed and that's that's the that's the bracket there here are the two uh, 10 millimeter bolts that was holding it down um, next thing of course is to get uh, the the bolt that is now fairly accessible now as you can see right there that's the bolt there I'm not sure what size that is but uh, we'll figure that on that one out right now there is another bolt a smaller bolt under the the starter we'll figure that one out too and uh, we'll get those two bolts removed then the starter should come right off and here is the the new starter um, got it off eBay for just under forty dollars this is where the the top bolt goes in um, as it turns out that's um, uh, 17 millimeter and uh, the other bolt on the underside is is uh, 14 millimeter this is where the hot connection is and that is where the the plastic connector goes in um, here are the two threaded bolts uh, threaded holes for the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the bracket on and that's pretty much it the new starter so I'm going to be using uh, an extension on my socket and uh, kind of feel my way down there and right now it's a 14 millimeter that's on it I'm going to go down there and feel my way and get it locked on and uh, get the, the bolt removed so I've gotten the two bolts off this is the, the smaller one the 14 millimeter that's on the underside and uh, this is the larger one the 17 millimeter on the top they were both uh, pretty tight so I needed to use my uh, cheetah bar on the on my wrench so just just letting you know that it does take a little bit of torque to get it out so now just I'm gonna wiggle the the starter out of there again I'm gonna need my both pants so I'll have to put down my phone I've got the old uh, starter out and uh, laid it alongside the new one and uh, the first thing that I notice is that the the plastic housing that the connector needs to get in is angled differently so I'm going to probably have to 
redo that. I think I'm going to just remove the this knot here and and uh, possibly bend bend this out towards uh, this way, kind of mimic the angle that that was on the original. Um, and that's partly because if I don't do that, this housing is going to get in the way of my of my uh, of my tool that will be bolting the the lower bolt on. So I'm going to take care of that. I've got the new starter in place and uh, put the the top the bigger bolt in first, kind of loosely in place. And uh, the lower one was a little more difficult. Uh, the bolt kept on falling off and I had to go down and pick it up again and do it multiple times so what I did do was uh, on this on the on the socket itself I kind of uh, jammed the, the bolt in using just some paper and that kind of held the bolt in place while I was futzing with it and uh, jiggled the, the body of the of the starter so that uh, it threads in right and uh, don't force it, just use uh, finger pressure just to make sure that it doesn't cross thread and uh, once it's tightened in and it's in kind of in, in place that's when you can go back and, and tighten uh, the, the top bolt which is what I'm going to do now now I've got the, the two main bolts uh, in and tightened up uh, it was pretty tight on the original one so I tightened as much as I could using my 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 ratchet wrench, um, and uh, that's where I am right now. So the bracket is in place. The two bolts have been tightened down. Uh, there is no need to go crazy on them. It's uh, just holding a bracket in place. Uh, just tighten them and torque them down a little bit, and that should do it. The, the hot connection has been made, again, don't over torque, that might break something internally. Uh, I've put the, I've made it the electrical connection there, and uh, that's about it now. I'm going to put the battery back on, oh sorry, I'm going to clean the corrosion on this using a, a wire brush or something, and uh, kind of clean up the area and uh, put down the battery. So I've cleaned up the, the battery terminal and uh, got rid of the corrosion. Just used a very weak solution of <clears throat> baking soda. Uh, all the salts that were on it, uh, all the white corrosion was uh, acidic salt. So baking soda will kind of neutralize it. And uh, now that's kind of cleaned up. I'm going to rinse it off with uh, just regular water and dry it up and reinstall the battery. So I've put together everything now. Uh, the air intake is now reconnected. I've uh, tightened up the clamps, the two clamps there. I've reinserted the, the pipe back into the into the nipple there and uh, moved the clamps over. Uh, slid the clamp down there. Uh, got the battery all connected. The terminal is looking clean now. Put a little bit of grease on top of it just to kind of protect it from corrosion. Uh, got all the clamps down and tightened firmly. And uh, that's the end of the job. Thanks for watching guys.